Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video I really wanted to investigate one thing only. What if we actually remove the atmosphere from every single planet in our solar system? How would they actually change and how would this affect them? In other words, how much does the atmosphere that you see on Venus right here affect every planet? Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Well, how important is the atmosphere in our solar system? Every single planet in our solar system has either a lot of it, like for example, in case of Saturn and Jupiter, that were basically they're uh, so thick in the atmosphere that they are called the gas giants, or they have so little, uh, like our friend Mercury, that it barely affects them at all. So in case of Mercury, the atmosphere is so thin that it's actually almost completely invisible. Well, let's actually remove all of this, all of this atmosphere and place it separately as a new object or between somewhere in the asteroid belt, maybe next to Ceres and Vesta. And let's investigate what happens to all of these planets, at least in terms of mass and temperature, as we remove the atmosphere um, from them. And let's start with Mercury. We're going to go under temperature here and discovered that it really has only approximately 10 tons of atmosphere, 10,000 kilograms of atmosphere. So we're going to remove this, giving it basically zero um, atmospheric pressure now. And uh, well, let's see if this affects anything. And chances are that it doesn't. It wasn't really a big deal before and it's not going to be a big deal now. Now let's place it around the sun and oh, okay, unfortunately it kind of just evaporates. Well, that's maybe not going to work right away, uh, unless I place it a little bit farther away. And unfortunately, even if I place it really far from the sun, uh, it still evaporates because there's just not enough of it present right now. So we may have to just do this a little bit later if we remove or once we remove more atmosphere from other objects as well. And it's really the next object that I'm really curious about because Venus is known for its thick atmosphere. The atmospheric pressure here is close to about 91 times higher than it is on Earth. In other words, it's 91.3 atmospheric pressures. That's uh, about 4.8 followed by uh, 20 zeros kilograms. That is a very, very, very big number. It's, as a matter of fact, it's uh, practically as big as Ceres itself. If I, have, if I actually click on Ceres right now, which is the asteroid, which is the largest asteroid or one of the um, uh, minor planets or so-called dwarf planets in our asteroid belt, its mass in total is like basically 9.4 followed by 20 zero. So it's about half of the uh, atmospheric mass of Venus. In other words, uh, if I were to remove this from Venus, it's going to have a dramatic effect. So let's see what happens. We're going to go in here and change this to zero and boom. First of all, you finally get to see the surface of this beautiful planet, but also watch the temperature. It was at around 470 degrees Celsius. We're going to come back to Venus in a few seconds and we're going to find out how well it's doing, but uh, let's actually add all of this now to our little bowl known as atmosphere. And essentially that is it. This is our new bowl known as the atmosphere bowl. And it's a, something like a series in size. If I were to play series, it's actually, wow, it's even bigger than a series. And that's because it is mostly consisting of, well, in this case it's hydrogen, but it's basically just gases, it's frozen gases. So it's a pretty big object. And that's just the atmosphere of Venus itself. And compared to Venus, this is what it looks like. So this is how much atmosphere Venus actually has. All right, so let's go back to uh, Venus for a second. And it's about to hit its uh, actual new temperature, which is going to be around minus 70-ish degrees Celsius. In other words, it's something like 540 degree difference. The atmosphere on Venus increases its temperature by about 540, 540 degrees. That is a ridiculous number. That's essentially the power of the greenhouse effect. And that's how powerful it is. So the new temperature of Venus is minus 74 degrees. Mercury is still at a pretty hot average of about 170 degrees. Let's go to Earth. The atmospheric mass on Earth is about 100 times less than Venus. We're going to remove it right now. Uh, actually, we're also going to disable climate and 
add this as a total to our atmospheric bowl as well, making it just a little bit bigger. And so, how is the Earth going to do with no atmosphere? Well, obviously it's going to freeze. Atmospheric pressure on Earth is not as great as it is on Venus, but the greenhouse effect here is at least 30 degrees Celsius. In other words, we're now going to be uh, always at, at a pretty low temperature. And as a matter of fact, our Earth is very likely going to become an ice bowl. Uh, we do need to give it a little bit more water though, just so that it looks more like an ice bowl. And its albedo, which is right here, is going to increase as well, making it more reflective and even more cold. So the temperature right now is minus 42 degrees. It's an ice planet covered entirely in ice. But one thing I forgot to mention about Venus is that its albedo is going to decrease to about uh, maybe about 0.3, 0.2. 2.5 because it doesn't have any water. As a matter of fact, it's a very, very dry place. So it's only going to be basically just barren like this and its reflectivity will uh, not be as high as it used to be, which means that the temperature here might actually not be as cold as it was initially. And this is something that I totally forgot to mention. And look at that. Its temperature is now in comfortable 30s. But of course, that's without any atmosphere. So the albedo effect does have a very dramatic change in temperature. And that's of course how reflective the planet is. Originally the Venus is about 90% reflective. Now it's uh, closer to about 30%. Whereas Earth uh, reflectivity increased because it's now basically a white snowball. Now, all right, let's go to Mars. Mars uh, is already cold. Mars has very, very thin atmosphere and Mars is not really going to change that much, both in albedo or the temperature, but let's see how much it changes nevertheless. It has about 100 times less atmosphere than Earth and about uh, 10,000 times less atmosphere than Venus. And it looks like its temperature dropped by about three or maybe four degrees. Okay, maybe five degrees. So not a dramatic change, of course, but change nevertheless. So once again, atmosphere here does have or does play a bit of an influence. And now we come to the big boys, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus. These are gas and ice giants, meaning that they have quite a lot of gas. And we want to take away this from them because that's technically their atmosphere, isn't it? Well, not really. So, okay, Jupiter is not entirely all gas. It's gas on the, uh, on the surface here. So the upper layer is sort of acting like gas, but once you go underneath, because of the pressure, all of this hydrogen actually starts acting liquidy. And then it becomes metallic. And then it becomes something else. And all of this is not really atmosphere, but just for the sakes of this simulation, we're going to take it as an atmospheric pressure. And so let's take away 311 Earths of hydrogen from our Jupiter and turn it into essentially a rocky leftover, a so-called Ktonian planet. And so there you go. This is a new phase of our Jupiter. It's still shrinking because its density has actually increased and it's going to become a very, very different type of a planet. Let's go into the atmospheric bowl and add all of this stuff to it. And so now we're going to start measuring the mass in Earth's. We currently have 0 0.00007 Earth mass. We now are going to add 311. And let's watch the changes that happen. So this is what our new atmosphere looks like. It is essentially a gas giant of its own. It contains nothing but hydrogen, uh, maybe some carbon dioxide, there's maybe a little bit of oxygen in there, but for the most part, it's just hydrogen. And that's essentially mostly from Jupiter. And having stabilized in size, this is what Jupiter looks like. It's uh, approximately seven Earths in mass. It's about uh, uh, 11.5 thousand kilometers in radius. Its density is a little bit higher than Earth, and it's also a little bit bigger than Earth in size. So it's a pretty cool looking planet, but kind of scary. All right, let's go to Saturn. And according to uh, the simulation here, Saturn's atmosphere, or I guess Saturn's hydrogen content is about 92.3 Earths in mass. So we're going to remove all of this, leaving nothing but silicates, water, and iron. It's going to shrink a little bit, and we're going to go ahead and add all of this hydrogen to our total atmosphere um, planet thingy-majiggy right here, and uh, let's see what it looks like. So this is plus 92.3, Making it, uh, okay, so now we're me uh, measuring it in Jupiter's. 1.27 uh, masses of Jupiter. 
All right, cool. So uh, this is also about 403 Earths or uh, approximately 2.4 um, followed by 27 zeros kilograms. So it's a pretty big object. All right, we're not done yet though. Let's go to, oh, let's check on Saturn first. How's Saturn doing? Saturn is a very barren looking frozen world. Uh, three masses of Earth in radius, uh, in mass, and about just over 10,000 kilometers in radius. Uh, so this is what Earth looks like in comparison. So it's very similar to the Jupiter we've created, maybe just a little bit smaller. Okay, Neptune and Uranus, you're next. Now, Uranus and Neptune are ice giants. In other words, they mostly contain things like uh, CO2 and water that we call ices. So this is underwater here. They don't really have that much uh, actual gases, what we would call essentially the atmosphere. So maybe just maybe we'll leave this here and only take away this. So this is 78.8 moons or about 0.97 Earths. And this is what it starts looking at, like if you remove all of the hydrogen. It once again becomes an ice ball, even bigger than uh, both Saturn and Jupiter, way, way bigger than Earth. This is now the biggest planet in our solar system. It has a mass of 13.5 Earths, 17,000 radius, uh, 17,000 kilometers in radius. Okay, let's add this to the total atmosphere and go to the last object here, Neptune. Neptune, once again, has a similar situation, but a little bit more hydrogen than Uranus at 1.08 um, masses of Earth. The rest is uh, water, silicates, and iron. Now, this is the new surface uh, of Neptune. This is its new mass and its new size. It's actually a little bit more massive than Uranus, but a little bit smaller because of density. So here we have mass of 16 Earths. This is what it looks like compared to actual Earth and its radius is 16,000.6 kilometers. And this is what our atmospheric bowl looks like after all of the additions. Its mass is uh, 406 Earths or 1.28 Jupiters, or if in kilograms, this is like 2.42 followed by 27 zeros. If we compare it to Earth, this is Earth. If we compare it to Jupiter, this is Jupiter. Let's move this a little bit closer to uh, the asteroid belt and see what it does to our solar system. And so now it's orbiting in the asteroid belt. We're going to let this run for maybe a few years just to see what actually starts happening. This is now the largest object in our solar system. It seems to be already affecting Vesta a little bit. And the other gas giants are basically just rocks. I'm going to show you all of this in comparison in a second by clicking on the chart here. And we're going to just explore all of these objects one by one. So here is our total atmosphere from everything. Here is Neptune, Uranus, the biggest uh, in size, but the second biggest in mass, Jupiter and Saturn. And then we have Earth. All five of these actually look remarkably similar. Venus looks completely different from what it used to. Mars hasn't changed at all. Neither has Mercury and the rest of the objects we haven't really touched. So this is what essentially would happen if you were to remove the atmosphere from all of these objects or from all of the planets that is in our solar system. Now I'm going to wait a few uh, more years and see if anything changes in the orbits of our planets as well as this supermassive object known as the atmosphere orbits in the asteroid belt and possibly just possibly changes things around. Anyway, Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share this with people that might enjoy learning through video games, and consider supporting this channel on Patreon as well. Come back here tomorrow to learn something else interesting, cool, or just watch me play a video game. I'll see you guys later, game you later, and as always, bye bye